uh, well, war that broke out but with Hamas launching rockets into Israel and the Israelis responding in the Gaza Strip started when three teenagers were kidnapped and murdered brutally uh, by uh, Hamas terrorists. And, uh, of course, now there is a glimmer of hope that there appears to be some kind of a truce and a ceasefire agreement that might last for more than a couple of days in place between Hamas and the Israelis. And to talk to us about it right now, we welcome uh, aboard the Consul General of uh, the State of Israel. And it's a pleasure to welcome to the show Ido Haroni. How are you, sir? Very good. Thank you for being with us. Appreciate it. Uh, before we even get into the deal itself... There's a missing American uh, 23-year-old from New Jersey named Mickey Rosenfeld who apparently vanished a couple days ago and he was his body was found in, in the forest. And at this point, is there any, uh, do we know anything about what happened to him? Yes, um, unfortunately last night uh, we received word from the Israeli police that um, the uh, youngster who's 23 years of age uh, was found uh, dead in the uh, forest outside of Jerusalem. It looks like the cause of death was a hiking accident, uh, but we're waiting for a final confirmation. Hmm. Well, as tragic as that is, that would be better than another uh, exactly. murder, that, uh, uh, especially a murder with a political objective uh, behind it. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, sad news, and we'll get more details on that as they become available. Let's talk about the deal that's in place now. Uh, what, you know, we've had countless, it seems, ceasefire agreements that were violated one after another after another. What's making this one stick? I think the fact that Hamas was really hard hit uh, after 50 days of, uh, of intense fighting. Hamas violated each and every proposal that was put on the table by the Egyptians. This is, uh, for our listeners to know, the 12th attempt to put in place an effective ceasefire. Israel said yes to all of them. The Hamas violated all of them. This is the first one that they're uh, keeping, and um, let's hope that it uh, stays that way. You couldn't help note with irony that when the ceasefire was announced, the Hamas uh, loyalists celebrated by, by firing shooting guns, guns in into the, the air. air. I mean, how do you celebrate a ceasefire with gunfire? But... Uh, you know, well, this is what I don't understand, and, and, and from this great distance, I guess I'll never understand. The the military uh, consequences of launching the rockets into Israel, when this ratcheted up, were predictable. The, the, there, were, there could be no other result other than what has happened for Hamas, and yet they plunged into this anyway. Right, and the reason is their ideology, and we've said it before, the most dangerous weapon uh, that Hamas uh, possesses is their deadly, brutal ideology, and this weapon is directed time and again at their own population, at their own people. The 1.8 million people that live in Gaza suffered a great deal because of this deadly ideology, and we have to remember, this is not the conflict that we have with the Palestinian people. The conflict that we have with the Palestinian people is national in nature and it's about the establishment of a Palestinian state. We support the idea, the United States supports the idea, the Palestinian National Movement supports the idea, and we've been negotiating a deal on and off since 1993. The conflict that we have with Hamas is part of a much larger clash of civilizations that the West has with global jihad. Hamas is like ISIS, it's like Al-Qaeda, like Islamic Jihad, like Hezbollah, and, and, and like Boko Haram, and, and the likes. Uh, there's a famous quote from Golda Meir from many moons ago that said, and I'm paraphrasing, we can forgive, uh, uh, we can forgive uh, our own children being killed. What we can't forgive is being forced to kill other people's children. It's true, and what Golda was actually referring to is the fact that, um, and, and if you look at the history of the Middle East, and, and one of the reasons why Arab regimes are collapsing in front of our eyes is lack of accountability. In other words, the power to change has to come from within. When a society is used to blame the other for its failures, they'll never get better. And what the Palestinians did, they taught their children to hate us more than they love their own lives, and that's a tragedy. Mm -hmm. Well, it is a tragedy, and uh, it becomes a death cult after a while. And it's, uh, I mean, I've analogized this uh, many times here, that the, the standoff seems to be, you know, it's, it's a simple analogy, but it's like you go into the boss and say, you know, I think I deserve a raise, and your boss says, that's funny, we were thinking of having you killed. 
it doesn't really leave a lot of wiggle room for negotiation. Right. What do you do with an enemy that wants you dead and not interested in compromise? This was our dilemma. Yeah, well, it's a dilemma that <clears throat> the world has to come to terms with. We see ISIS and ISIL, whatever you want to call them, and we see that this uh, toxin in human form is uh, is very much alive and, and tragically, uh, stunningly, very seductive for many people, and that's something that the West is going to have to grapple with. Thank you so much for being with us, sir. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me. Uh, the Consul General.